Arteries, veins, and capillaries are three different types of blood vessels which have the task of transporting blood throughout the body under the pressure of the heart, engine of the cardiovascular system, and of our life. Thanks to continuous heart contractions, blood circulation allows to supply all the cells of the body with oxygen and nutrients, while simultaneously eliminating carbon dioxide and other waste products. Think that in the human body, there are on average 120,000 kilometers of blood vessels, about three times the circumference of the Earth, or almost 20 times the distance from New York to Rome. However, when the walls of the blood vessels begin to harden and therefore lose their natural elasticity, there is a decrease in the lumen of the vessel and therefore a reduction in blood flow. We are talking about atherosclerosis, that is a pathological alteration of large and medium caliber arteries in which the narrowing is caused by the accumulation of fat. In particular, atherosclerotic plaques are formed, also called atheromas, and arise following the accumulation of fats, including cholesterol and phospholipids, proteins, and fibrous tissue, which are deposited in the endothelium, that is in the innermost layer of the arteries, that is the one that is placed in direct contact with the blood. Atherosclerosis is a disease that generally progresses very slowly and is asymptomatic in the early stages. Although atherosclerotic plaques can begin to form at a young age, around the age of 20, the symptoms usually start to become evident after middle age or in old age. In this video, we're going to see what some of the symptoms of atherosclerosis can be, especially when the arteries already have plaque along their walls, but which aren't yet big enough to completely cut off blood circulation. Atherosclerosis is usually asymptomatic until the artery narrows more than 70%. Among the symptoms we find Angina pectoris Angina pectoris refers to chest pain of an oppressive or constricting type, which can also spread to the left arm, jaw, and back. It begins slowly, usually during intense physical activity or a stressful episode, to then reach its peak and finally disappear within 10 to 15 minutes. If, on the other hand, the pain continues beyond this period of time and persists even at rest, it could be a sign of a myocardial infarction, so it is necessary to call an ambulance immediately. Angina pectoris occurs following myocardial ischemia, that is when less oxygenated blood reaches a specific area of the myocardium. In most cases, the cause is precisely atherosclerosis, as the formation of atherosclerotic plaques inside the arteries causes a stenosis of the coronary arteries, that is a narrowing of those vessels that arise from the aorta and run on the external surface of the heart, supplying the myocardium with oxygen-rich blood. Cardiomegaly the term cardiomegaly indicates a medical condition in which the heart increases in volume, either due to a dilation of the atrial or ventricular cavities, or due to an increase in thickness of the walls of the heart, or following the accumulation of fluids inside the pericardium, that is the membrane that surrounds the heart organ. Among the possible causes of cardiomegaly, we find coronary artery disease, that is anatomical or functional alterations of the coronary arteries of the heart. In most cases, they are a consequence of atherosclerosis, as the plaques deposited inside one or more coronary arteries cause a narrowing of the internal lumen of the vessel and therefore a reduction in the blood flow to the heart muscle. The heart thus implements compensation mechanisms that force it to work harder, increasing its volume over time. This condition of cardiomegaly, if not diagnosed and treated in time, can be the cause of heart failure. It is a pathological condition that occurs when the heart is unable to pump enough blood to meet all the body's needs. Among the symptoms of cardiomegaly, we find palpitations, cardiac arrhythmias, chest pain and dyspnea, that is a sensation of lack of air, caused by a difficulty in the gas exchange that takes place between the blood present in the capillaries and the air contained in the pulmonary alveoli. Intermittent Claudication Intermittent claudication, from the Latin limp discontinuously over time, indicates a difficulty in walking, characterized by pain, stiffness, and weakness in the lower limbs, and which resolves within a few minutes with rest. Usually the pain is similar to that of a calf cramp, and forces the sufferer to stop constantly to relieve the pain. 
This happens because a sufficient quantity of blood, and therefore of oxygen, does not arrive to the muscles proposed for walking. Hence, the intermittent claudication has taken the name of window shopping diseases, as those who suffer from it must often stop to look at shop windows in order to rest and reduce the muscular effort required of the lower limbs. Claudication is the main symptom of what are called peripheral arterial diseases, that is, those diseases of the circulatory system, in which there is a reduction in blood circulation due to a narrowing of the arteries in the arms and legs. The deposition of fat in the walls of the arteries and their loss of elasticity are the main causes of peripheral arterial disease. As the atherosclerotic plaques grow, the shorter the distance the patient can walk without symptoms. Amorosis fugax Amorosis fugax is a vision disorder that consists of a temporary reduction in visual acuity in one eye only, as there is a lack of or reduced blood flow to the retina. It is also sometimes referred to as transient monocular blindness and is usually due to the obstruction of blood circulation to the retina by a blood clot or a fragment of atherosclerotic plaque. It can also be caused by a severe atheromatous stenosis of the carotid artery, that is a narrowing of the lumen of what is considered one of the largest and most important blood vessels in the body. Also in this case, among the main culprits we find cholesterol and fibrous tissue, which depositing themselves in the walls of the arteries, hinder the normal flow of blood. In amorosis vigax, the vision of only one eye appears blurred and generally has a variable duration ranging from a few seconds to a few minutes. It can also be associated with vertigo and diplopia, also known as double vision. It is a visual disturbance that occurs when the brain has the simultaneous perception of two distinct images relating to a single object. All the symptoms we have seen so far are usually caused by a gradual narrowing of the arteries. On the other hand, when a blood vessel suffers a sudden blockage, for example in the coronary arteries, a heart attack can occur, while if it affects an artery in the brain, a stroke. Among the possible causes we find the rupture of an atherosclerotic plaque, which can lead to the formation of a blood clot, thrombus, in a blood vessel, and therefore to a thrombosis. However, if this blood clot breaks off it is called an embolus, and can travel freely in the bloodstream until it reaches an artery or vein of its own size. Thus occurs what is called an embolism, in which the affected blood vessel is closed by the embolus like a sort of plug, preventing blood from circulating. Therefore, keeping the arteries clean improves the functionality of the heart, brain, and the entire body, also reducing the risk of developing various cardiovascular diseases. In the last video, which you can find by clicking above, we have some foods that can clean up the arteries.